Hello quilters and welcome back to my channel and to spending some time with me as I share with you another block. This block is not mine originally. I saw this pattern on the internet and I think it's a pattern that was designed by um, Connie Crescent Campbell and I found it on her blog, uh, Free Motion by the River. And I just thought it was so pretty, I had to make it, and like I said, and share it with others. And so, here it is. It's called the Rainbow Rail Fence Block. It's a large block, it's a 16 inch block. It's made from strips, as you can see, and it has a center square. And you can um, either use a jelly roll to make this, or you can buy yardage and cut the yardage into strips. But it is just such a striking block. I can hardly wait to complete all of mine and put them together in a quilt. So this is what we are going to work on today. Here are our fabrics for the rainbow rail fence block. I have four fabrics. I've de decided to use blue fabrics for my block. You can feel free to use any color that you want. You can use a variety of colors in the same quilt. Just keep in mind that you do need three different tones of the same color for each block. So here I have the dark blue, the medium blue, and the light blue. And I had not intended to make my quilt out of blue, but I went into a local quilt shop and they had the most beautiful fabrics in the uh, colors of fabrics in Stonehenge. And I couldn't resist. So all of these are gorgeous Stonehenge fabrics, including the white. The white I need to use for a center square. The three blues are gonna be cut into two and a half inch strips. Now you can easily make this quilt using um, just jelly rolls. If you have jelly rolls that have the color that you want and you have three different tones of the color, by all means, feel free to use that because I am going to cut these into two and a half inch strips. So if you have jelly rolls, that first step has already been done for you. You can choose a white for the center square or you can choose any color you want that coordinates or complements the other colors that you have chosen. So that's what you wanna keep in mind. Just remember that I am using the blues and my center square is white Stonehenge. And I wish you could see it um, up close because it really is gorgeous and it has the Stonehenge texture in it. Okay, so I'm gonna get started cutting. And the first thing I'm going to cut will be the squares, the center square for each block. Now, I know that I want to make 20 blocks. This pattern makes a very large uh, block. It's a 16 inch square block. And I want to make 20 of them because I like qu large quilts. That means I have to cut 20 squares out of the white fabric. And these squares that I'm about to cut are four and a half inch squares. So the first thing I'll do will be to cut a strip of fabric across the width of the fabric. And then I can cut that strip, which will be four and a half inches into four and a half inch squares. So I will start there and then cut the strips from my blue fabrics. First, I need to press this piece of fabric. Okay, I have cut three strips from my white fabric, three four and a half inch strips, and I have stacked them one on top of the other. And here you can see that there's one, two, three. And I want to make sure that they're very even. This just 
means that I can do this a lot faster by stacking them. I think I'll bring that up on the table. Make sure that they are, uh, the edges are even and that they're straight. And the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of the selvage edge. So I'm going to pull this up here so you can see that. I don't want the selvage in my quilt. So I'm going to cut off about three-fourths of an inch to get rid of that selvage. And this way I get rid of it on all three of them at the same time. Okay, now it's just a matter of measuring four and a half inches, four and a half inches, four and a half inches. And as I go, I can keep up with the number of squares I've cut. And I will know when I have cut 20 squares. That's the first three. And by stacking them, you see it goes a little bit faster. You do want to take your time and make sure your cuts are as accurate as you can make them. Because you've heard me say before, usually if we have mistakes in our quilts, they start with the cutting. Okay, that's six of them. And I'm just going to continue cutting until I get all 20 of the squares that I need. Okay, I have all of my 24 and a half inch squares cut and I'm going to put them aside. I have pressed my lightest fabric and gotten it ready here on the table to be cut. And this time I'm going to cut it into, cut the fabric into two and a half inch strips across the width of the fabric. So I'll pull it up some so that you can see me doing that. And that's what you're going to do with all three of the blue fabrics, or in your case, whatever color you're using. So I'll cut a few and then uh, just go off camera and cut the rest of the strips that I need. Some of you are wondering how many strips I need to cut or how many strips you need to cut. And this is one of those patterns that allows you to make it whatever size you want. The block itself is 16 inches square. And in that block, our colors are gonna be cut after we cut these strips. They're gonna be sewn together and cut into 10 and a half inch strips. So you have to figure out how many 10 and a half strips do I, times four do I need for the number of blocks that I'm going to make. And I can't tell you that because you are going to make a quilt that's not the same size as mine, probably. I just like big quilts, so I know that I'm making a big quilt. But if you keep in mind the dimensions, a little bit of math, and you can figure out how many of these initial strips you need to cut. And so once again, let me just say what I, I previously said. Once I cut the strips for each and out of each call each tone of the fabric those strips will be sewn together and then cut into 10 and a half inch lengths so essentially you want to know how and there are four of them in each block so you want to know how many inches of the fabric you need uh, multiplying it times four to make the size quilt that you want. And if you do the math and then divide that by the number of blocks, it'll tell you how many strips to cut. Okay, having said that, I'm going to start cutting strips from my lightest fabric. And I really wish I could get uh, ca the camera close to this so you could see it. The marbling in here that is characteristic of Stonehenge fabrics is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, there are some pinks, some darker blues, some violets. Oh my gosh, just beautiful. Which is why I brought it out of the store with me when I came out. It was just one of those situations where the fabric started calling my name and as quilters, all of us know what that's like. And you feel very guilty if you leave the quilt shop 
and leave a fabric in there that's calling your name. You just can't be that cruel to a piece of fabric. So I'm going to continue to cut my strips and then I will get back with you and let you see the rest of the process. Okay, I have cut the strips from my light fabric. And remember, I told you you will have three different tones of the same color, light, medium, and dark. And next, I'll cut the um, strips from the medium fabric. But I want to share with you a little bit about how to decide how much fabric to get, because that's always uh, very important to all of us. We want to make sure we have enough to complete the project, but we certainly don't want to overbuy just for the sake of overbuying and creating a stash full of scraps. One of the things that will help you with this is, first of all, decide how big you want your quilt to be. Remember I said I want my quilt to have 20 blocks, 20 16 inch blocks. That's a pretty big quilt, but I like big quilts. I also know that when I sew together a light strip, a medium strip, and a dark strip, they'll all be the same length, approximately 42 inches wide. Once they are sewn together, I have to cut them into 10 and a half lengths. Well, that tells me I can get four 10 and a half lengths out of the 42 inches, approximately four 10 and a half inch um, pieces or cuts out of the strips. So if you think of it in those terms, for instance, I had bought a yard and a half of fabric. I have cut 20 light strips. I have about six inches of fabric left over from those uh, 20 strips. That should give you some idea of how to figure out what you will need. If I got all 20 of my strips out of an, a yard and a half, maybe you're gonna do this and you only want 12 blocks since they're so big, or you only want 16 blocks since they're so big. Think about how many times you need, I mean, how many strips you need in order to go along with the blocks. And it's a one-to-one -one correlation. So if you need um, 16 of these strips, then you need to buy approximately a yard and maybe a yard and an eighth of fabric. Because I had a yard and a half, and I can see you can see what's left over after having cut 20 strips. So think of it that way. Maybe you only want to use, you only want to make a quilt that has 12 blocks in it. No problem. You got 12, you will need enough fabric to get the 12 strips out of it. And that's probably a yard of fabric. I think we can get 12 strips out of a yard of fabric or maybe a yard and a half. So that should help you with determining how much fabric uh, you will need for this project. Okay, now it's time for me to put the light fabric aside and get my medium fabric, take it to the ironing board and press it because it has creases in it, and then I'll be ready to cut it. And once again, oh, the Stonehenge fabric, can you see that? Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? I am just amazed at how pretty this is. And for so long, I thought Stonehenge only came in those yellows, golds, and browns. Well, it turns out Stonehenge has a large variety of colors uh, in which they produce this fabric. Well, the Northcutt co Company that produces the fabric produces it in a large variety of colors. But when I saw these blues, I knew I was hooked. And I can hardly wait to see what the block looks like. Okay, I'm going to the ironing board, get this pressed, and then I'll come back and cut the strips for this. Okay, I'm cutting the strips from my medium fabric, and um, I need to cut 20 strips from this fabric just like I did from the light fabric because I have to have the same number of strips from each color. And um, 
if you're wondering, when I finish cutting all of my strips, then I will take the selvage off because I don't want any selvage in my quilt. And if you're not accustomed to doing that, you need to begin to do that. Always take the selvage off. Um, you can do it before you cut it, the strips or you can do it after you cut the strips. I tend to do it after because I think I can be a little more accurate taking it off of a few strips at a time as opposed to the whole yardage. But this is what you are going to do to make your quilt. Cut your fabrics into strips or skip this step by using jelly rolls. Either way, you have to have two and a half inch strips to make this project. So I'm going to continue to cut the strips from the medium fabric and then we will do the same thing to the dark fabric. Okay, so now you can see I have cut the 20 strips that I need for my quilt from the medium fabric. And you can begin to see the beauty of these fabrics as I line them up beside each other. I mean, just gorgeous. And then we're gonna put that dark um, blue, dark stone hinge blue over here but it's just got the most beautiful colors running through it. The purples and the violets and the pinks. Very, very pretty. Okay, I need to press my dark fabric and get that cut. Okay, once you have cut, cut the strips from your dark fabric, your medium fabric, and your light fabric, then you're going to sew those three strips together from selvage to selvage to make a unit. We have to have these units all sewn before we cut to get the units into the block. So I'm going to cut this unit and show you how I go about doing that. Now, just a little of an aside, if you're still wondering how much fabric you're going to use for this, one of the things I discovered was that each strip, since it's 42 inches wide, each strip will give you one block. So when I finish cutting this unit, for instance, this unit of three strips, I will have four segments. And each block requires four segments. So that might help you with determining how much fabric you're going to need for this. Once again, one strip will give you four segments because we are cutting these 10 and a half inches um, long and 10 and a half will go into 42 approximately four times. So we can get the strip. Be careful with your cutting, but you should be able to get one block out of each unit. So then when you start looking at how much fabric do I need, you do that by counting the number of blocks you want to make. Remember I said I'm going to make 20 blocks because I like big quilts and this is going to give me a big quilt. You may not want to make 20 blocks. You may need enough strips to make 16 blocks or 12 blocks. Whatever size uh, quilt you want, you can just about count the blocks based on the strips you're using in the unit. Um, so that will help you with determining how much fabric you're going to need. And let's get started with the cutting. The first thing I need to do is take these selvages off. And I mentioned earlier that I do that at this point. And I'm going to use my ruler and my rotary cutter. I don't eyeball this because it's too important. So I like to line everything up. I've lined this edge up with one of the uh, lines on my cutting board. And I have a line here just behind the selvage that I can line up my ruler with to get a nice straight cut. And I want that cut to be perpendicular to the edge of the unit. This little ruler wants to slip around, so let's get the big guy who won't slip. 
and I just want to line it up against the line that's just behind those selvages and take the selvage off. Okay, no guesswork here. Now I'm going to use my ruler to measure 10 and a half inches. Now rulers are only six and a half inches and I understand that. But if you turn the ruler so that one is here on the fabric and put the edge of the ruler down on the 10 and a half inch mark, you will get your 10 and a half inch cut. And this is a little bit wider than the ruler. So in order to make sure I get a nice straight cut, I just put another ruler right beside it. Just butt them up. I've got 10 and a half inches, and here's my first cut. Nothing to it. There's the first one. And I'm going to continue doing the same thing to get uh, the rest of the units that I need for one block. Here I go again, the 10 and a half inch line is down at the end. I put this little ruler beside it so that I don't have any space where the rotary cutter can waver. I want the rotary cutter to go straight across and give me a straight cut. So that's unit, that's unit number two. And see how we can get these units out of the one strip. That's one strip of each color. The three colors, the three tones rather, have been sewn together. And we're going to get enough for one block. When you finish cutting this unit that you've sewn together, you should have four cuts. And when you do, that's your one block. And that helps you to determine how many strips you need for the number of blocks you want to make. Notice that when I finish cutting this, I will even have a little bit left over. I'm not going to do anything with it right now, but there are about two inches left over from, from my cut. And you just saw me Take one unit and I've gotten my four cuts from that one unit. And that's what you're going to do as well when you start cutting yours and when you start um, making your blocks. So once again, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but I do need you to understand one strip of each tone, dark, medium, light, dark, medium, light, one strip of each tone will be sewn together into a group of three. Press it, press all seam allowances in the same direction toward the darker fabrics, and then you're going to cut your units of 10 and a half inches from the three that you have sewn together. And really, that's the key to this whole block. Once you do that, the sewing is very, very simple, and the block goes together very quickly and very easily. And later, we're going to the sewing machine together, and I will demonstrate that for you. As you consider making this block, this rainbow block is really a beautiful block. But I wanna show you something that can happen that can change your, the design of your quilt when you make this block. When you start to sew your units together, we always put the light color toward the middle square. So we would start designing this block this way. The middle square is here, and we just continue to put the units around that middle block until all of the units have been sewn. The other thing that can, well, one of the things that can happen is if you notice down here, and I'll try to get that onto the view of the camera. Okay, if I start sewing this together by putting that center square on the right end 
of the first unit. All of the units are going to orient toward the right. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to put this here, put this one there, put this one there. And hopefully you can see all of this. What you notice is if you look at the light strips, you can see how the light strips go toward the right. This one um, moves to the right. This one comes in to the right. This is down and this is up. But notice how they orient to the right. So if you were to go around this, that's what you would get. The same thing happens or just the opposite happens when you start with this center square on the left of the first unit. So I'm going to move this one aside and show you how it looks with the, uh, we're starting on the left and then you can compare the two. So we'll just move this over some. Don't have a lot of space on this table. This is a big block. It's a 16 inch block. And so it does require lots of space makes a big, beautiful quilt, however. And when you make yours, you're going to be very pleased with the end result. Okay, in the last one, I started with the center square toward the right of the first unit. This time, I'm going to put that center square toward the left of the unit. And I want you to notice what happens when I do that. Look at just look at the light color first. That will help you to see how the block is oriented. Now you can see, and we've got them side by side and it really makes a difference when you do that. But now you can see that we're coming to the left. I mean, we're, yeah, we're coming to the left. We're coming to the left. We're down on this front unit and up on this unit over here. Just the opposite occurred when we did this one. Look at what's happening at the bottom. We've got the dark colors coming together in the middle. We've got the um, light colors facing each other. And we almost lose the original block. You want to be very careful when you're putting your blocks together. If you want this effect, right, left, right, left, then you can start half of your blocks on the right end of the, found of the first unit and half of your blocks on the left end of the first unit. That's fine. But if you don't want this effect, if you want all of your blocks to be oriented in one direction, keep in mind that you have to start each block exactly the same way so that you don't get them going in opposite directions. And that's very, very important to remember. You may want to start all of your blocks with the center square toward the right. You'll start by stitching this part way and stop. Then you will put uh, another unit out here and stitch that, a unit up there and stitch that, and a unit there. And Doing that the same way for every block you make will make all of your blocks exactly alike and they will all be oriented in the same direction. Keep that in mind. You can start to the right or as we've done with this one, you can start to the left. It really doesn't matter, but you need to be aware that if you don't start all of them the same way, all of the blocks will not orient in the same direction. And you may have to fudge some things. On the other hand, you might get a wonderful design unplanned just by turning some of your blocks one way and some of your blocks another way. So that's very important to know, very important to remember when you get ready to sew your blocks together. I'm going to now go to the sewing machine, sew some together, and you will get to see 
how my Glocks are oriented. Okay, I've sewn my blocks, and here is what I was describing before they were sewn. One of the blocks is oriented to the left. You can see that the center square is on the left end of this first unit. The other block is, or is oriented to the right, and the center square sits on the right end of the first unit. And when we put them on the table together, we can see the effect that we get. We can see that we have two very different blocks, very opposite blocks. I put them together and I can get these um, strips going along in one straight line at the top. And if I had another one, I could put it here, it would happen here, it would happen here. And we can see that the other strips make a very find vertical grouping in with the blocks. And it doesn't matter whether you put them side by side that way or side by side this way. What happens, however, and I think this is cool, I love it when you get serendipitous designs. Now we get the vertical at the top of the blocks coming together. And we get the horizontal at the bottom of the blocks coming together. Doesn't matter, we've got two different blocks. And that's what I need you to be aware of when you start sewing your blocks together. There is no right or wrong. I'll say that again. There is no right or wrong. You create the quilt that you want. You may want all of your blocks oriented to the right. That's gonna be a beautiful quilt. You may want all of your blocks oriented to the left. That is also going to make a beautiful quilt. You may want every other block oriented in a different direction. The quilt will be tremendous. You may want every other row oriented in a different way. That's still going to be a beautiful, beautiful quilt. So there is no right or wrong. There's just a decision for you to make. And once you make it, go with it and fly because you will have created a gorgeous piece of work. All right, I have the block laying out on the table so that you can see it. I've cut the four segments out of our um, three strips that we had sewn together. And now I've taken one of the four inch squares and put it in the middle. And that essentially is the way the block will look. And it is a very large block. So I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and show you the technique for sewing this together. And we will have made the rainbow rail fence block. This block requires us to start a seam, stop that seam, put other elements of the block together and then complete the seam. So the first thing I want to do is pick up one side of the uh, block and I'm going to attach it to the center square, but I'm not going to stitch the whole seam. I'm going to sew up to about halfway of the seam. So I'm putting a pin there to make sure I remember to stop. This is the unique thing about this block, and this is how you achieve that look that looks like everything is overlapping. And when I get to the pin, I'm going to backstitch. Okay. And I can just leave that there. I want to clip some threads. Now, I've sewn the square to one side of the block, but I did not complete the seam. I'm going to press this seam allowance, press it toward 
the blue and then we're going to sew another side of the block over here. Let me press this. Okay, now this was right here on the block. So I'm going to pick up the next piece. And I want to make sure you notice what I'm doing here. We keep the lightest color of our blue toward the white center. The lightest color comes inside, the darkest color is on the outside. That's very important for you to get the rainbow effect. Remember that on a rainbow, the lighter colors are on the inside of the rainbow and the darker colors, the blues and purples and so forth, are on the outer side of the rainbow. So we're gonna follow that pattern for putting this together. And once again, please slow, sew slowly, maintain your seam allowance, so that you get a block that you really are proud of. Okay, we've got side number two sewn. And see how that's coming together with side two. And I need to press that seam allowance. That's why you want to have a pressing station right beside your sewing machine. It's always wise to have one there anyway. But certain patterns like this one just require you to press every seam as soon as it's sewn. Okay. We've got two of the sides on our uh, block, and now it's time to put this third seam, this third side together. That's what the block looks like, and that's what has been sewn, and now I'm going to put this side on the block and sew that. And I tend, I want to sew this one with those seam allowances from the blue fabrics up so I can make sure they don't turn over when they get to the feed dogs. Okay, side number three has been attached and I need to address that seam allowance with the iron. So that's what I'll do next. And we have our block almost done. Now it's time to add Side number four. And number four helps us to understand why we did not complete the first seam. As you can see how that is gonna go right in there and the last thing we will do is complete this seam.
And once again, I'm going to stitch this with the seam allowances showing from the blue because I don't want them to flip over as they go over the feed dogs. One more seam to press, and then we can finish the seam we started in the beginning. And here we are. We've gotten all four sides on, and you can see that incomplete seam that we started right here. And now all I need to do is follow that seam and complete it by joining the first side we put on with the very last side. And so here we go. And I'm going to sew once again with the seam allowances up. One more pressing and the block is complete. And here is our rainbow rail fence block. And I'm going to demonstrate that stitching one more time because I really want you to, to understand why we start a seam and stop it and then how we get all the sides on and make the sides look like they are overlapping. 